going to wait a few more minutes uh, for people to enter, and then we're going to get started. But welcome. You are in the right place for the Mel's Middle School Open House. And we're going to give one more minute for people to enter and then we're going to get excited or we are excited. We are going to give one more minute for people to enter and then we're going to get started. Uh, and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about an overview for the evening and what tonight will look like. Okay, hey, I'm going to get started. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pat Finley. I am one of the co-principals at the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School. And again, I wanna welcome you to our open house. And this is our open house for middle school. So you're in the right place if your child is currently in fifth grade uh, and about to enter middle school. Tonight, we're going to be sharing a little bit about MELS and a little bit about the process for applying. And tonight's meeting is gonna be recorded. So we are gonna to record tonight's meeting and we will be uh, posting that video to our YouTube page. Again, wanna welcome everybody this evening and I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. McCoy. Uh, give me one second. We're having uh, technical difficulties with the translation. So we're going to give one more minute uh, to uh, adjust for the translation unit. Then we will begin recording. So we'll pause recording. We'll begin recording. Uh, in a few minutes to and begin the open house. Again, just want to make sure we set up our translation services first. Thank you. Okay, hi everybody. Um, Why don't we start over? <laughs> Great. Go for it. Thanks everybody. Uh, again, thanks for your patience. We uh, used to uh, do our online or open houses in person. So again, doing it this year online is different. So we're gonna get started. Welcome. You are in the right place. If you are online or viewing this video and you have a child in fifth grade, this is the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning Schools open house for next school year. My name is Pat Finley. I'm one of the co-principals. And tonight we are going to be recording uh, our session and then posting it to our YouTube channel. So again, I'm one of the co-principals. Welcome. We are going to be providing you with a lot of information on MELS and the steps you need to take if you want to apply for next school year. I'm going to hand off to the other co-principal, Mr. McCord. Thanks. Hi everyone, um, thanks for joining this uh, webinar. Uh, unfortunately, this is the format we have to use right now, but um, we look forward to future meetings, hopefully being here in the building. Um, I just wanna make sure you're in the right place. First of all, my name is Damon McCord. I'm one of the co-principals at MELS. Um, 
if you are here, this is the middle school open house. So if you are here, it is because you currently have a fifth grader who is going to be entering the sixth grade in September. And uh, if, if you are here, it is because your fifth grader attends a District 28 elementary school or is zoned for a District 28 middle school. Um, if you are in those situations, you are in the right place. If you are trying to go to the high school open house, that open house does not start until seven o'clock and it's at a totally different link. So um, I do just wanna make sure you're here for the right thing. Um, if you are present on the Zoom at the bottom of your screen, you should see a button that says Q and A. Uh, we do not have chat available for attendees today um, and we will not be answering questions in the chat. We will only be answering questions in the Q&A, which is right down at the bottom of your, of your Zoom screen. Um, as we go through the questions, we will answer them, um, and then they will be posted to the sidebar, um, or we will uh, verbally answer them um, and then dismiss the questions. So uh, without further ado, I do want to introduce um, our parent coordinator, who is uh, Ashley Barcia, who is going to talk a little bit how, about how families can access this meeting in Spanish um, and, and talk a little bit more about the, how the video will be posted online and uh, use the website as a resource. So Ms. Barcia. Good evening, everyone. Let's record if you want to enable me to start my video. If not, totally okay. Um, hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Garcia. I'm the parent coordinator. Uh, I've been working with Mouse for the past year, year and a half. Um, I was once a student at, as well at Mouse. So for students applying for the incoming sixth grader, I was also once in your shoes. Um, uh, coming as an incoming seventh grader. So I know all the nerves of what's like coming from a school of District 28 and coming to a school that's much different like Mel. So if you definitely have any questions or curiosity, if this is the right school, definitely feel free to send me an email. Buenas noches a toda mi familia que habla español. Uh, mi nombre es la señorita Barcia, soy la coordinadora de padres. Uh, estoy trabajando en la escuela de Mouse por lo último año, año y medio. Um, y yo también fui un estudiante uh, que comenzó los primeros años en nuestra escuela. Entonces, si usted o su estudiante tiene cualquier curiosidad sobre nuestras escuelas, si quiere saber más si esta escuela es el mejor escuela para usted, por favor, mándame un correo a, a mi correo. O también tenemos diferentes servicios esta noche para podemos uh, contestar sus preguntas. Abajo de tu pantalla puedes ver uh, un un mensajito que dice Q&A. Aquí puedes poner sus preguntas en español y yo voy a estar disponible esta noche para contestar sus preguntas. También tenemos un servicio para que usted puede llamar y escuchar esta cita en español. Usted necesita, necesita marcar el número 347-966-9700. Con el código de conferencia que yo puedo poner en el chat, dale este número una llamada para escuchar esta cita en español. Otra vez, si tienen cualquier pregunta, por favor ponlo abajo y yo lo puedo contestar en español. I hand it to you. Great. Thanks, Ms. Barcia. We are incredibly appreciative to have Ms. Barcia. As she said, she's an alumni, so it's really wonderful to have her at Mills. So again, uh, my name is Pat Finley, and I'm one of the co-principals. And tonight we are recording this. So if you missed anything or came in late, um, you can certainly watch the recording. And again, you can type in your questions into the Q&A function at the bottom. So tonight we're just going to give an overview, a little bit of the history mills and an overview at our partnerships. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, well, you'll actually have a chance to watch a short video. And then we'll talk a little bit about the application process. And then we'll make sure we've answered all those Q&A questions at the bottom. And then we'll bring tonight to close, but that's a little overview of the agenda. So first, I just want to talk a little bit about the history of MELS. 
12 years ago, uh, Mr. McCord and I founded an Open Mills, uh, and it began with grades six and seven, and we have grown up into a six through 12 school, and we have graduated, I think, six classes of students. Uh, Mills has a absolutely wonderful staff that we're incredibly appreciative of a, that knows our kids very well. That's one thing I can promise for Mills over the 12 years that we have been in existence. If you're looking for a school that will know your child well, care about your child as an individual and take care of them, then Mells is the right place. During our 12 years, we've had a lot of success. We've been very fortunate to be recognized by the city as a showcase school and a learning partner school to be recognized nationally by EL Education as a mentor school and a credentialed school. And we uh, last year had 100% of our students graduate. We have averaged about 97% of graduation rate um, with 99% of our students applying to college. Uh, and uh, one of, we also have one of the best rates of students staying in college and persisting through college in, in the city, for, especially for unscreened schools. So um, we're really proud of the success Mel's has had. We think it's a really special place. And if at the end of the evening, it seems like we're the right place for your child, uh, then you'll follow the uh, steps to apply and keep your fingers crossed so that maybe next year you are here. Um, so uh, our campus uh, is a shared campus. We do share with Queens Metropolitan High School, a nine through 12 school and P233, a district 75 school. And our school is completely separate for the, from those schools. You actually can't access them very well from the inside of the building. So we keep a completely separate program from the other schools. Uh, again, we, we have been around uh, for 12 years serving District 28 in Queens, and, and we have a wonderful, wonderful staff. So we can talk a little bit more about the program um, uh, here in a minute. I do just want to kind of recognize this year we have had the additional challenge of, of COVID, um, you know, in the last year and a half and the regulations and that go along with, uh, you know, what schools have been dealing with. So first and foremost, I'd just say we, we send our best to all of you. We know it's been a really trying time. At MELS, we take safety really seriously. We, we want to make sure that we're taking care of our staff, our students. So, you know, we have been prioritizing and making sure that we're following the, the rules and regulations for, for the city. Um, and uh, we are hopeful, uh, just as this year we have return to many of the things before COVID. We're, we're hoping that next year we will continue to be able to bring back the things that are so important in our school, uh, like camping trips. And, you know, we have been going out on field work and bringing experts in, but, but you know, there, there are still some precautions we are taking uh, to make sure we're the following the, the regulations set by the city. I'm gonna hand over to Damon so he can talk a little bit more about our school and what makes this unique. Thanks. So um, when we first started MELS, we really wanted to create a, a public school that that wasn't really a traditional place and that um, took, a, took a much different approach to education uh, within the public schools. And so um, we wanted to kind of make it clear that just even though you were a public school and you had a union, um, that you still could do really, really interesting work with kids and curriculum, create a, a really strong school culture, and be a true college prep uh, school. And so far, we've done that. Um, and so the, the pieces that, that are kind of unique to our school are that, um, first and foremost, like we, we are a school that values diversity and inclusion. Um, our school is one of the most diverse schools in New York City and New York State. Um, which is really unique because uh, New York City is, is actually one of the places where schools are the most segregated. Um, we think it's really important to have students from a variety of different backgrounds and experiences and perspectives um, because that's how the world is. And so, uh, you know, this is a school that really leans into talking about, um, you know, so social justice issues uh, and, and things of that nature. So, um, and we, we value the fact that we are one of the few schools, if not the only school that serves all the elementary schools in District 28, not just a few that are closest to the school, but every school in District 28. Um, we are also an incredibly progressive school. Uh, Queens is, is not really known for being a place where there are a lot of progressive schools, but 
um, we really invest in that heavily and, and we it, it means we take an approach that that kind of encompasses the whole child. Um, our students are not just test scores for us. Um, we get to know all of our students well. We want to talk to them about uh, elements of their character and their habits of work and learning and how they function as human beings with other human beings. Uh, more importantly than, than being good students, we want them to be good people. Um, and finally connected to that is uh, it's in our mission statement that you can see on our website, but we want our students to be change makers in the world. Um, we want students to think about the world that they want and, and take action to, to bring it about. And so um, you can only do that if you give students experiences that are connected to the real world. And so at our school, you'll, you'll hear more later, but we don't do a ton of textbook learning. We, we do a, a lot of actual real life primary source learning that um, that translates into students really learning about the things that are going on in their world. Um, and, and we think it's it's working so far. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Pat again, just to, to talk a little bit more about uh, what it means to be an EL education school and a New York City Outward Bound school. And then we're gonna watch a, a couple of short videos, um, one of which was, was created by New York City Outward Bound and another one that is, this is its world premiere tonight um, that was created by students. So Mr. Finley. Great, so as you have figured out, our school is the Metropolitan Expeditionary Learning School with the words expeditionary learning in the title. And that's part of a larger organization called Expeditionary Learning EL Education across the country. Uh, EL Education partners with uh, urban schools, rural schools, suburban schools, uh, elementary schools, middle schools, uh, high schools, private, public, charter, all types of different schools. Uh, but what EL education has in common is uh, there are certain structures that support progressive tenets of education. And when I say progressive tenets of education, I mean EL education schools believe in centering not rote memorization uh, and regurgitating, uh, you know, memorized information and, and basic skills, but rather critical thinking, deep thinking about the world around us. Um, so, you know, the structures, uh, they support the whole child, the growth of the whole child, the social emotional side uh, as well. And uh, our, our school has a lot of structures to support interdisciplinary learning, uh, to make connections across the content. Uh, and again, our, our school really uh, values in lessons, kids talking to one another, working with one another, and grappling and struggling through problems, again, rather than just memorizing uh, information. So the structures that go along with being an EL school, uh, an EL education school, we, we have the same state standards that other schools follow. Uh, and in high school, we have the regents. And in eighth grade, we, we do have a regents uh, as well. But uh, most importantly, it's how we organize the state standards. So um, rather than just having the textbook, have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, our teachers take the standards and organize it into what we call expeditions. And, and those are units of study that allow uh, different contents to enter in and answer the same guiding questions. So that, uh, you know, in, in an eighth grade, as students are learning about uh, fighting for their rights, that's the name of the expedition, they can enter that from uh, different standpoints where they're looking at the fight for 15 and uh, minimum wage and math and they're, they're exploring uh, in social studies, the labor movement connected to the, the state standards for social studies and, and throughout their classes, they're entering into that expedition to make connections. Our school also has a, an advisory system that we call CRU. It's the first part of the day, the first class. And, and students are known well by a CRU advisor and the CRU has no more than 16 students. And that's really where our, our little family units within the school. And a great example of how CRU has been so important would be during COVID. Uh, and a lot of schools and middle schools and high school where teachers have 120, 150 kids, uh, kids got lost and, and in remote learning, uh, they weren't connecting or logging on and it was tough to, to really support students. And with crew um, in our groups of no more than 16, our crew advisors knew where their kids were, took care of them, got the information that they needed for them to log on. Um, and it was a really strong support during a very hard time. And, and that's what CREW does. It really builds community in our school. 
Another structure is student-led conferences. So rather than doing traditional parent conferences, our students call their work from their classes and they share that work in a portfolio and present to their parents. And again, that's building the kind of skills that we believe are important where students are able to communicate about their strengths and challenges um, and talk about their, their work in general. So those are just some of the structures. And, and again, hopefully that gives a better idea for what EL uh, education expeditionary learning schools look like across the country and why we chose to partner with such an organization. I'm gonna hand it off to Mr. McCord to queue up the video and you can enjoy seeing a little bit about what our school looks like in action. Our support system is really, really amazing. Whether it's peers or your teachers or your principals, you know that you have a whole bunch of people behind you supporting you and pushing you forward. And that's what really drives our success, is being supported. So when I feel that support, and us as individuals feel that support, then we can go ahead and domino effect that towards the students. In our schools, there's this really powerful sense of community. There's this ethos of we are crew, not passengers, where everybody takes care of and looks after one another. We basically stay in the same crew class throughout all four years of our high school experience. And like your crew basically becomes like a little family. Crew and the cooperation that happens in classrooms really helps to build connections between students and teachers and, uh, and empathy for one another. Teaching compassion and teaching character is a part of the curriculum. It's important for you to know and be able to take accountability for the things that you're learning. The work that we do is entirely student-centered. We think about our students constantly, both who they are, but also where they're at. I've been able to push past my comfort zone. Brooklyn Collaborative has kind of just made me persistence to the point where I believe that I can succeed in any setting. The academic work that students do really pushes them beyond what they thought was possible. Having to do research, not just like answer questions on a test, students learn more. One of the unique things about my school is the hands-on learning model. We do a lot of taking notes and just a lot of critical thinking. It's helpful not only here, it's a lot of uh, preparation for college. When our teachers design curriculum and they build our units, which are our expeditions, they, they look for content that is meaningful and relevant. Outward Bounce is a model that does think about the future and all that it does. And I believe that's the reason it stresses getting out into the community and doing your learning outside of the classroom, because that's the world that they will be living in. So when you go on field work, it's not necessarily like a field trip. It's a applied learning. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Nielsen. If I see the things I'm learning in school applied to that specific job, it's going to make me want to work more and make, make me more motivated. And that's our starting point, is a, both a belief and an expectation that, that everyone can do remarkable things. Just knowing that you have potential inside of you and it doesn't matter where you come from, you know that you'll be able to do as much as the person next to you. Anything is possible if I am somebody who's persistent, if I'm somebody who's kind, courageous, collaborative, and all those other core values that we hold dear. As I go on through college and as I go on through life, I'll keep that in mind to believe in myself more because I'm much more capable than I think I am.
Okay, uh, that was a little bit uh, about MELS and New York City Outward Bound Schools. And now you're gonna get a student view of what happens uh, in MELS from the, um, from the perspective of some of our eighth graders. So here we go. So here at Mel's we have crew. So we want to start off by showing you our sixth grade crew room. So crew is like very similar to homeroom and other schools, but crew is more of like a community and it's something that is really special at Mel's. <laughs> This is what we look like during crew, um, but now we're going to do an initiative. Two, so today in the crew, we're going to make this initiative five, of the Hulkathon, where we do initiatives just as one activity um, during crew. We do a closing, so this is ours today. And the closing just helps us feel like we're going to do well in school and do well in our classes and succeed. On three, crew. One, two, three. Crew! At MELS, there are expeditions, and expeditions are about two case studies. Basically, um, an expedition is like a whole topic that we're going to be learning about, like Eva said, for like a month or so. And then each class has a specific case study where you go deeper into the topic related to the subject. One thing I love about the MELS community is the infinite groups. The infinite groups showcase different identities, religions, and sexualities. One of the aspects that we love about the MELS learning environment is that teachers take our needs and what we need to learn best into consideration when planning lessons and events. MELS teachers only want us to succeed and do our best in the MELS community. There are different aspects about MELS learning that's specific to MELS, for example. Something I like about MELS is I'm able to work together with my classmates and answer questions. Finally, one more aspect of MELS that is specific to MELS is our community is being included in MELS. Um, every every culture is at least somewhat included at one point. And like Diana said, even cultures and different aspects of people are incorporated into our daily lessons to make sure that we all feel like we are learning more about each other and ourselves. So there you have it. There's just uh, a short video that we wanted to make sure we showed a little bit about this year. Uh, you know, uh, it is a different year uh, where, where students are in mass and following COVID regulations, but we're still trying to do this, the things that we believe in and are important to our community. So you saw a video about EL education um, and you still saw a short video from our students to share a little bit about what they thought you should know um, as applicants. Uh, I want to talk a little bit right now about the application process. Um, <clears throat> we There is no longer a priority for attending an open house. Uh, I, if you're a family who has a sibling or applied years ago, um, you might remember that things were different, and, and that is correct. Things used to be different, but tonight there is no sign-in sheet. Um, there is nothing that you need to sign or do that will, that will give you an advantage in applying. 
Um, the advantage in attending the open house is learning about our school. And um, it, it does, uh, my guess is that um, it, it will be helpful to, to apply after attending tonight's open house because you're gonna have that information. Uh, and you know, not everybody in the district is going to attend the open house and, and learn about our school. So tonight you've attended, you love what you hear, you're gonna apply when, whenever the application deadline is, and, and that's something you're gonna to talk to your elementary school about because we do not handle applications at all. So you're gonna do everything through the application through your elementary school. When they announce the deadline, by they I mean the Department of Education, you will hear it from your elementary school and you'll turn it in. And when the results come, you'll hear that from your elementary school. So again, you're gonna get an application from your elementary school. You hear about a date, due date from your elementary school and then you'll receive the information for who you've been matched with in from your elementary school. There is no preference currently for anybody who has siblings. Uh, and again, there is no advantage to attending an open house. So uh, it will be a lottery system for all of our applicants in District 28. Uh, and again, the only grade to enter is sixth grade. So this is it. You're a fifth grade family. You love what you heard. You're gonna apply. You're going to keep your fingers crossed and you're going to hope that you get one of the 120 or so seats that there are out of the many, many hundreds of applications we receive. Um, you're going to hope that you're selected and we're certainly, uh, you know, going to be excited to welcome families with an orientation uh, once we get the information of who is matched to our school. We are not a screen school. Um, we uh, do not look at any screens or tests and uh, District 28 again is the priority so you need to either attend a District 28 elementary school or be zoned for a District 28 middle school and we recommend that you rank us high. I know every school is going to say that but we don't know the exact formula that the Department of Education uses but we do have a lot of people that apply so we recommend that you rank us as high as you possibly can to have your best chance of getting in. Um, and again, any questions about the application really should go through your elementary school. Um, we won't be able to answer those questions uh, about the application. If you have questions about the application that you think we can't answer, put it in the Q&A. But again, most of those should go to your elementary school. And I'm going to hand it back to Damon. Great, thank you. Um, so we are, I'm gonna talk briefly about uh, some of the nuts and bolts that, that happened here at MEL. So the, the first thing that you probably saw in the video is the fact that we have a school uniform. Um, we know that sometimes schools say that a uniform helps them with their discipline issues. We don't really believe in that. Um, the, the main reason we have a school uniform is to build a a shared sense of community and identity. Um, and it's really just a, a Mel's shirt and a pair of khaki pants and black or brown shoes. Um, I know there are probably going to be some students who are like, I don't wanna go to a school that has a uniform because I need to be able to express myself um, through my clothing. If you are making a choice about your school based on what clothes you can wear, we should probably have a deeper conversation about what you're actually looking for in education. Um, we're a school that, that doesn't believe that superficial or outside things such as clothing are, are what I, are how students create their identity. We want people to, to express themselves through the content of their ideas, the type of person they are, like how do they treat other human beings, um, you know, all of the things that have nothing to do with fashion. That's exactly how we want students expressing themselves. Um, and and it, just from a, a purely practical standpoint, this is a huge campus. Um, and if one of our sixth graders makes a wrong turn somewhere, uh, that, that Mel's shirt tells the adult that finds them where to return uh, that child. So, um, you know, the uniform has, has both some like like philosophical uh, pieces to it, but also some really practical pieces. Um, second thing is we are a school that's really consistent with our structure. So, um, you know, there are, if you're a dress code school or a uniform school like us, that requires a lot of consistency. And so it's really important to us 
um, that things like the uniform and cell phones are, we're really consistent about them. Um, we know that some schools, kids are on cell phones in their classes and, and doing whatever it is teenagers do on their cell phones. Um, at Mel's, you don't see that. Uh, we don't have students in our, in our classrooms on their cell phones. Uh, if, if we see or hear a student's cell phone, we confiscate that phone and an adult has to come pick it up. And there might be adults out there that are like, oh yeah, I really agree with that policy um, until your child gets their cell phone taken and you have to leave work to come pick it up or make arrangements. And then you'll be frustrated, but that's exactly why the uh, policy works is because um, we are so consistent with it. And it's not just a warning. Uh, there's an actual piece where, where adults have to get involved. Um, a little bit about the schedule. So uh, Mel's has 68 minute classes. Um, so there are big chunks of classes. You can't do uh, you know, deep investigative real world work without having a big chunk of time to do that. And so we have 68 minutes um, are, are for our classes. So basically the day looks like you start with crew in the first period, which is your student and a group of no more than 15 other students. Um, it's really the community building part of the day. Um, then they have two uh, content classes, each for 68 minutes after that. Uh, then they have a 40 minute lunch and then they have three content classes at the end of that. Um, so every day, uh, you know, we know some middle schools double math and double ELA and kids only get science like once or twice a week and they only get social studies once or twice a week and they get gym once a week. At Mel's, your kids will have science, math, social studies and English every single day of the week. Um, we, we think it's really important to establish a, a really strong foundation for high school. Um, and then they will also have uh, physical education or gym um, twice a week, as well as in sixth grade, they will have visual art twice a week. Um, that's, the, that's the structure for our middle school. Um, we introduce foreign language in ninth grade and our students take at least three years of a foreign language in high school. Um, we don't do it in middle school because we really think it's important to first build a really solid academic foundation um, to, to help kids prepare for, for high school. Um, after school programs, we, we have a number of them. Uh, it ranges from coding to uh, plant care, to sustainability club, to some after school soccer. Uh, we also have an after school program that's run by uh, um, Global Kids, which is a, a community-based organization that, that runs an after-school uh, program here until about 6 or 6.30. Um, and then finally, uh, it hasn't happened the last two years, but um, one of the big pieces of sixth grade here at Mel's is that in the spring, uh, all of our students, all of our sixth graders go up to Sharp Reservation and stay for a three-night, four-day uh, outward bound course um, up upstate and they go with their entire crew with their crew advisor and each crew has two additional outward bound instructors. So there are three adults for, for a group of 15 students. Um, they stay overnight. Uh, parents don't start freaking out right now. Um, there's nothing to, to get anxious about. Uh, we haven't lost a kid. Uh, no kids have been eaten by bears. Uh, nobody's, you know, fallen off a cliff. Uh, every kid has, has gone up there, had an incredible experience and come back uh, really excited about crew and science and all the things that, that they did up there that were a part of the curriculum. So we will talk more about that later. Um, don't even worry about that now, but we did just wanna, wanna name that it is a part of, of Mel's Middle School. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Mr. Finley to, to kind of wrap us up and uh, talk about a few closing things about Mel's. Thanks, Damon. So again, want to thank everybody who tuned in this evening or thank you uh, in the days ahead if you're viewing this video and you think uh, Mel's might be uh, the right place for you to apply for your child. Um, just want to emphasize again, look, you're in District 20 and there's a lot of good options. We're just one of those options. And if you're applying to Mel's, it's because you're looking for a school 
that values the things we've talked about tonight. Not because the building's newer or uh, you like the outside look at the campus, you're applying because you wanna go somewhere where your child's known well, where your child is gonna have a well-rounded experience beyond memorization of skills, where there's a value on taking kids out in the world, where there's value on equity and diversity as being meaningful for, for all students, uh, where there's value of students investigating to learn. Um, and you're interested in MELS because we're a great school. We're recognized at the city and state level. Uh, our graduation rates, our college uh, acceptance rates, our college persistence rates. Um, and you're applying to MELS because you're not just looking for a seat in middle school, you know that kids get lost in the Department of Education, moving and transitioning so much from elementary to middle and high school, and you want them to have a guaranteed seat in high school and a consistent school culture for the next seven years. Those are the reasons, hopefully, you have heard tonight about MELS and why you would move forward with, with an application. Just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, if you haven't put your question in the Q&A, please put it in there. Damon and I are going to stop the recording in a second and we can answer some of the questions in the Q&A. Um, but again, we wanna thank everybody and we're gonna bring uh, the informational, uh, you know, the very uh, Pat and Damon centered part of the evening to a close, which is not what our classrooms look like, but we do wanna get you the information. So we, we tell you as much as we can. Uh, so thanks everybody at this point, if you wanna stay on and listen to us and answer questions, you certainly can. Um, and if not, uh, have have a great day. Uh, we'll keep the recording going just because some of these questions are um, going to be pretty pretty widespread. Um, so a couple of things that that came up in the in the Q and A is there busing for sixth grade? Not unless your child has it on as part of their IEP on um, their individual education plan, um, which is a, a special education regulation. Um, so there is no busing for sixth grade um, across the city. So middle school does not have busing. We issue Metro cards to students. Um, and so they will take the, the public bus to, um, to Mel's. Uh, if, if, they, if they live a certain distance from the school, they will get a Metro card. Um, there is no sibling preference for, for middle school. Um, we know that's a thing in elementary school, but it, it, it doesn't apply for, for middle school. Um, if, if your child does not get in, is there an opportunity to start in seventh grade? Uh, not really, our only grades of entry are really sixth grade and ninth grade. Um, seventh grade and eighth grade are, are not places where you can come in because we already have an entire group of sixth graders, which is usually pretty big. Um, so you would have to reapply in eighth grade to, to get in for ninth. Finley, you want to take a couple? Sure. I've been trying to type some of the responses. What are the school hours? They are 8.30 to 3.20, uh, except on Wednesdays, uh, it's, we dismiss at 2.15. Um, trying to see what else. Uh, we have a really strong art and uh, music program in the middle school and in our high school. Um, students take visual art uh, and they take uh, instrumental music and then they can go deeper in that study in eighth grade. And then at the high school level, uh, similar, you know, we do uh, have students take three years of, a, of a, an art, even though only two credits for one year is required. Uh, so a lot of our students do exit with a really strong uh, art uh, experience. As far as the specifics of the art and music program, uh, I can only say it's it's really well-rounded um, and students have done a variety of different things in, in both classes. Student teacher ratio depends on how many students the, the DOE sends us, to be honest. Uh, you know, I, I think that the DOE typically sends us uh, enough students that it ends up being about 30 30 students to uh, a class. Uh, do we have IEP services? Yes, just like every other uh, DOP school. If any, and if any school said they don't, that, that is not correct. There are services that are provided, uh, related services, um, you know, like speech, occupational therapy, uh, and, you know, uh, schools are expected to follow students' IEP. 
uh, lunch is currently 40 minutes. And uh, yes, uh, students do go outside. We rotate that to make sure that um, everyone uh, has an opportunity, but not all at once. So we do have to rotate that space. Question about uh, seven years. Yeah, kids who are with us in middle school, they get to stay with us, not just preference. They have a guaranteed seat in high school. So again, can't stress enough when everybody else in other middle schools is stressing out in eighth grade about high school applications, students and Mel's don't have to, they have a guaranteed seat to one of the best high schools in New York City. We truly believe that. Uh, there's plenty of racks for bike and scooter parking. Well, I'm really, it's just topic to topic here. You got to keep up. I'm trying to knock them down as they're coming in. Um, sixth and seventh and eighth graders sometimes are in classes in the same floor, but they don't really interact together. We don't have a lot of it's not a lot of sixth and eighth grade hanging out that occurs uh, for the most part. You know, maybe the bus stops, some kids meet each other, but kids tend to stay in their own grade for the most part. Um, and there's about 120 kids per grade. So in the middle school, you know, that's about 360 kids. I whizzed through those. So if you, you know, if you have further questions, you can certainly follow up with emails to Mr. McCord and I, but we did want to set aside a little time tonight to answer those questions. If we didn't get your question answered, again, you can certainly email us, but we're going to have to wrap up tonight because we actually have to move on to our high school open house. Um, a majority of our students stay with us in middle school to high school, about 90% of our students, but we do have some students that move away or uh, end up going to a, a different type of program. Uh, and we do have a few seats that open, so we have to do a high school open house as well. Um, so we're going to say goodbye tonight. Um, and thank you all for coming out. We'll answer the rest of the questions here in the chat, but we're going to be signing off in a minute or two. And hopefully you have heard enough tonight that you want to apply and move forward. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Like I said, we're going to sign off, uh, but we will answer the written questions in the chat. Have a good night. Thanks.